Hey guys, uh, something a bit different today. It's currently Wednesday. Me and Rex both have the day off work and uh, Shane is sorting some issues with the cruiser. So we're gonna, Rex is on his way down with some parts and we're gonna head over there and uh, <coughs> see if we can sort out some issues with that. But uh, first things first, it's time for coffee. Oh, damn. So currently I'm back to daily at the SS. Rex is currently using the Navara to uh, move some stuff, move house and that sort of thing. So back to daily in the old, uh, the Sesh S, I like to call it. So basically what happened with the Cruiser is a bit of a long story, but um, we had a bit of a play around with the ECU, with HP tuners, and kept bricking ECUs. Uh, basically, the only computer we had access to at the time was like a pretty old school laptop, like old Windows Vista, I think. It was old and slow, didn't have very much RAM, not as much RAM as HP tuners recommends for your, your base for the system, so partly the computer. Aside from that, we've also been told by a few people since that have helped us out by unbricking ECUs and that, that the uh, the new HP Tuners software is a bit how you going and apparently the new OBD dongle is very insecure and can often, you know, cause issues doing that sort of thing. So when you get halfway through uploading a new map and it doesn't quite work or it disconnects um, due to instability or because of the computer, it just basically bricks the ECU. So we had a lot of issues uh, we eventually just sort of decided to give up on it and let Shane do it. We just got it back to running. It was still running real rich. We put it on the tilt tray and sent it down to Shane. So uh, Shane's just now sort of starting to have a look at it. He's found a few issues we're going to go fix up. So we're just going to cruise over there and have a look and see what we can sort out. Oh, be time. Man, Commodore's copped so much shit, but I actually massively enjoy this car. Yeah, boy. Tiger Micah. Tiger Micah VTSS. Ooh. What's up, dog? Mm. Tasty. What are you doing? We're doing a vlog. You're doing a vlog? We're doing a vlog. So, this is kind of weird. I don't think I've ever been passenger in this car. Haven't you? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever been passenger in my own car. Or this car, anyway. So basically, Shane reckons it's only firing on like three cylinders. We are suspecting that that is due to the fact that it was dumping so much fuel, it's probably just got dead plugs. All right, well, we're pretty sound in our theory. We cleaned up the plugs, which were very, very bad, very wet. And uh, it sort of started and ran for a bit before it killed the plugs again. So it's definitely too much fuel in the plugs. So we'll buy new plugs tomorrow, or Rex will buy new plugs tomorrow because I gotta work. And hopefully get it uh, sorted out. Still got a few other little things that Shane's picked up that we need to fix up, nothing too major. There's, there's poo on there. All right, so today is finally the day. Hopefully the crews are getting tuned. Um, I had to work yesterday, but Rex spent yesterday sorting out a heap of issues on the cruiser. So much poo. Poo everywhere. Alrighty, so some information we did find out. Rex, of his, uh, Rex yesterday was still having issues with the box shifting still is having issues with the box shifting. You can manually command gears through the PCM through HP tuners, so using that we should be able to still have it tuned today. But as it turns out, the four wheel drive versions of the 4L80s did not come with a reluctor wheel in the gearbox for the speed sensor for the PCM, uh, because the four wheel drive versions had a reluctor wheel or a speed sensor in the transfer case. So given the cruiser's speed sensor in its transfer cases for the speedo and does not send an electronic signal to the PCM, it can't be used. Um, so basically the options are to buy a reluctor wheel and put it in the gearbox, which is a pain in the ass because it's right at the back of the gearbox. Literally the furthest thing at the back of the gearbox. Or is it Mark's adapters? Mark's adapters. Mark's adapters actually sell like a little adapter that goes into the speed sensor on the four drive, on the cruiser transfer case. Speedo, speedo drive would be more accurate. It's not a speed sensor. Goes into the speedo drive on the transfer case of the cruiser and then actually converts that speedo, or well, the speed sense to an electronic signal for the PCM, as well as being able to plug in the speedo drive to the same point again. So that's basically what's gonna happen. It's a little bit more expensive than just putting a, a reluctor wheel in and probably not as desirable as having it set up properly, but considering the box is already in the car uh, and with that conversion thing, we can he can just plug it in and go without having to pull the box out. Yeah, it makes like it very, very, 
appealing. It would take five minutes to plug in the adapter box and you're off. Or you have to pull you know, the tail shafts out, pull the transfer case out, pull the box out, split the transfer case and the box, then completely dismantle the box down to like zero to put that reluctor wheel in, then reassemble it, put it back together with the transfer case and the adapters, and then you know do the whole thing in reverse and get everything back in the car. It's like two days work. Um, and the car isn't home, so we don't have the use of our hoist and our tools and things like that, so it's easier just to, to buy this adapter and be done with it. So at this stage, that adapter's been ordered. It's on postage at the moment. Uh, today's Friday, so we are just going to try get this cruiser tuned uh, so that's all ready to go. Hopefully Monday this adapter is going to be turning up. Once that happens, adapter can go into the car and should be able to drive home after that. But unfortunately at the moment, the cruiser's not driving because it's not selecting or oh, changing gears on its own. So, but yeah, that's where we're at. Did you plug the map sensor back in? You didn't, did you? I didn't. Also didn't plug this, uh, <laughs> this post line back in. So. That'll probably do it. Don't use that footage. Delete that. <laughs> you stop filming right now. Flamingo Friday. running far better with much less fuel. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's not obnoxiously loud, but you can definitely hear it. Yeah. No, it sounds good. Got the old school, uh, Race plate, mate. <laughs> yep, she's still there. Bit faded. So we pretty much ironed out all the little issues. There was a kink in the hose to the boost controller, so I wasn't seeing any boost, so we've sorted that out. Um, basically most of the stuff's ironed out. Also, we figured out the issue we were having with the OBD dongle was probably the way our OBD plug was wired up. Uh, we've since changed it so that the voltage and the earth goes straight to the battery terminal, so it's very, very stable and, and not uh, custom to voltage change so that's going to help with the stability of the, of the OBD dongle and so far it has been fine since uh, that's probably was their issue with it the whole time. So we've basically since learned that the OBD port is very or the, the PCM is very very sensitive to voltage change so basically since we wired the voltage feed and earth straight to the battery terminals so that it's st stable it hasn't had an issue since. Yes that's correct. We believe that was the issue with it killing the um, PCM while we were trying to chin it. So probably had nothing to do with uh, HP Chin's new dongle, although we have heard also that they have stability issues, but it seems to be it was the way that our OBD port was actually wired into the car. So another thing we've learnt, a lot of things we've learnt along the way. Now we know for next time. So this is all right. This is just radiator overflow. This is not alright, that is leaking from somewhere. We're pretty sure it's a crack in the radiator, so at this stage it's just... We'll deal with it. It's not leaking too bad really, considering we've got the auxiliary tank, but uh, not ideal. Not ideal.
Big nod to the rescue. As you can see from the dyno graph, or from the intake pressure, the gates are doing some weird pulsing, surging one side to another, and it's uh, getting a, a few spikes and stuff, so we're trying to figure out what's going on there, but apart from that, everything seems to be going sweet. Apart from this uh, radiator having a little bit of a leak, so just keeping an eye on that, everything's going good. We're just gonna chuck some seal tight in the radiator to see if that helps us out with this crack. Um, can't hurt to try, and uh, if not, we'll have to source a new radiator, but. So we're pretty sure the uh, boost creep issue uh, we think was is being caused by the uh, boost controller. Yeah, basically we disconnected the boost controller lines to the top of the gates just to try and run gate pressure and sort things out. Pretty sure what's happening is the controller is still hooked up and is still opening and closing the solenoid to try and control the boost at zero gain. So we've hooked the lines back up. We're going to see if that evens out that um, that pressure curve and gets rid of that that waviness in the boost boost lines. We'll give it a go. So, so far, what are we, 4 to 16? 4 16. 4 16 on gate pressure. At, at gate pressure at around about 7.5. Which is uh, so. pretty happy for a so cruiser through, on 33s. That's right, yeah, through the 4L80 and the cruiser diff on 33s, that's not too bad power, all things considered. So, we're hoping to turn it up to about 12, see how we go.
Oh, that's that exhaust tap again. Looks like we fixed our uh, water leak for now. She's all good. A couple of little issues to sort out and fix. Um, but at the moment it's running and drivable. Once we get that uh, speed sensor issue sorted, then it's actually drivable. Uh, the silicon we have on all of these uh, pressure references and stuff is just falling apart. It's just terrible. So we're going to buy some genuine turbo smart stuff and fix all that. Once we do all that, it's just uh, we've just got to figure out this boost controller and we'll get this boost issue sorted. And it should be all good at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's making that 383 wheel. That's on gate pressure, which is 6 PSI. So we're pretty happy with that for power. We'll easily make our 420 that we want for our daily driving. And on our about 13, 14 PSI for, for play time, it should easily make our 500 and that's as far as we want to push this stock stock LS1 <laughs> overall good day bud everything went pretty reasonably well no major issues and that's awesome so stoked but anyway we'll um we'll work on that at 385 for a while we'll try and get this uh, speed sensor sorted so we can iron out all these issues at this sort of power range and then once we're um we've got all these little niches sorted out we'll uh run some more boost into it see what it can really do thanks for watching guys as always and uh we'll see you next time we're playing with it i suppose we'll have some proper fun driving footage so just a bit of an update um you would have seen the first startup video and just how much fuel is pouring in. We actually tracked that down to a faulty map sensor. The map sensor was actually telling the PCM that it was under 4 psi of boost at idle, which is why it was absolutely pouring fuel through it. It does this weird thing when you back off. We thought it might dose with what, uh, without any blow off valves or anything, but it does this weird thing where because the two turbos have different intake lengths being the driver's side has to cross over to the passenger side before they uh, join in their wire pipe. When you back off the throttle and you get your compression wave coming back through the intercooler system and the intake piping, it actually alternates uh, blowing out through each of the turbos and there's this really slow dosing sound that alternates from side to side. It sounds very strange, kind of cool. We had some issues with the gearbox not changing gears a reluctant wheel in the back. Oh, oh, oh fuck, sorry. Uh, oh. Oh. Max can edit that bit out. She's all right. We actually got the unit from Mark's adapters uh, that adapts to the transfer case. Wired it all up and uh, works great. Went for a bit of a test drive and just changed some settings around and had to just calibrate it so that it's uh, uh, talking to the PCM properly and telling it the right speed. Now the uh, box shifts like it's supposed to do, and it drives great. And then we drove it home to Savo, and everything's cool. It's all good.
I don't know how, I don't know how to use it. I don't know. I don't know what to do with my hands. All right, guys. So like Rex said last episode, we thought it might have been just the tune was out, but it was actually, in fact, just the map sensor was faulty. The tune was actually like uncannily close to where it needed to be. Shane didn't have to change much at all when he got it on the dyno. So anyway, um, cruisers more or less slowing up a bit now. So episodes will slow down a bit, but keep posted. We will keep you updated. There is, it's not, it's far from finished. There's still a lot to do, but uh, probably not uh, weekly videos from this point. But anyway. Uh, cheers for watching guys, like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and uh, head to our Facebook and give that a like and head to our Instagram, give that a like and you know, see what we're up to. Cheers guys.